Hey guys, Mike Chilson here from RC Scale Builder. Um, I had some requests from people uh, to show you how I do the finishing process. Uh, there's nothing really special here, but there are a few tips I want to show the new guys uh, that might help you, you know, not hit the same hurdles the rest of us hit. Uh, but stick around, we've got a lot of things to show you, so let's get started right away. I want to talk about sandpaper. This is kind of the, the main uh, tool you're going to be using in this process, so it's important to understand how to use it correctly. The first thing we want to talk about is sandpaper selection. On the left here we have a 220 grade uh, 220 grit paper from Harbor Freight, which looks fine. And then we have 3M 220, okay? Um, a lot of people would say, well, sandpaper is something I'm going to be throwing away, so I'm going to get the cheapest sandpaper I can find. That is a big mistake. And let me show you why. Uh, cheap sandpaper will gum up a lot more than the more expensive will. And let, let me show this to you. I'm going to hold up two samples. On the left, let's see if I can get this uh, in the picture correctly where you can see it. Okay, on the left here is the cheap sandpaper, and you can see the spots on it. And on the right is the more expensive sandpaper. Both of these sheets of sandpaper were, were uh, sanded on separate spots for 25 strokes, and you can see the difference. Uh, so it really does make a difference when you buy the proper tools. Okay, so you say, okay, well great Mike, uh, I just went and spent $20 on cheap sandpaper and I've got all this cheap sandpaper, what do I do with it? Well, there's actually something you can do with it that will be very helpful. Um, one of the major problems when you're sanding primer is getting, uh, keeping your paper clean. So I've come up with a little way to do this. I take a small piece of uh, particle board or wood and then I use some 3M general purpose 45. Uh, by the way, this is foam safe, which is important uh, in the future. We're going we're gonna to show you why. And what I do is, is I just take a piece of the, the cheap paper, cut it roughly to the same length as the board. <clears throat> and then we spray a little bit of this adhesive on the back, maybe just a tad down the middle. And then we stick that down. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is going to give us a place to clean off our sanding block. So now we found a use for that cheap paper that we didn't uh, really have a use for anymore. And this, this is a whole lot better than using paper towels. Um, the way it works, let me show you, is let's say you've got a, a sanding block here. As you see it's got some primer on it. There, all cleaned up. So it's that simple. Um, so instead of having to change out that paper, you get some more use out of it. Okay, stick around. We've got another tip to show you, too. Okay, guys, welcome back. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about, uh, before we talk about the foam blocks, we're going to talk about what paper to use when sanding. Uh, I usually have my... Uh, surfaces close enough where I can sand exclusively with 220 grit but if you need to, to make coarser blocks that's no problem. Let's talk about doing that real quick. Uh, as you can see here there's three stacks of blue foam. This is just scrap foam I had that I've cut into nice flat um, surfaces on my bandsaw and I've actually made up some sanding blocks already for the medium thickness. Now the reason you have different thicknesses is that it allows you to control how much the the sanding block is going to bend as you sand. So if you're doing a contoured surface like a curve, you probably want to use a thinner block that is going to allow the foam to, to bend just a little bit. 
Whereas if you're using a flat surface, you probably want to use the thickest blocks so it'll maintain that shape. So let's, let, let me show you how to make these real quick. This is really easy. Let's move these out of the way. We'll do uh, one or two thin ones. Basically you want some 3M general purpose 45. This is foam safe spray adhesive. Uh, you can find it at Lowe's, Home Depot, just about any craft store. Uh, so what we do is we take one of these blocks and we, we take the flat side that I've, I've cut on the bandsaw and actually spray a little adhesive on it where it's just wet. We'll go ahead and do a couple of other, other of these also since I'm going to need them anyway. Okay, so now we take our our paper that we use to make our other uh, blocks and using the corner I like to align it on the corner because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to uh, do a lot of cutting and then I just take my scissors and cut carefully along the edge you don't want the paper to overhang the edge uh, otherwise it'll grab the surface and you just simply press down making sure the adhesive is uh, stuck to the uh, paper of the foam and then I like to write what grit paper it is uh, so my feeble mind will remember. Uh, while like I said I, I normally use 220 for most projects I may use some of these on other projects if I don't use them all so I need to know what grit it is. So let's put one more together here and actually put that one on the wrong side so we'll use this one there we go so we'll take this guy and stick him down and we'll mark it and then I would just continue on the process and, and do my thick blocks and then I would have a, a nice set of blocks to start with. Plus we have our uh, piece of wood with our, our old cheap sanding paper on it to help keep our blocks clean. Uh, so we have a plan now and we have the tools ready to go. Okay guys, we're back with the last installment of this short video. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the tools that we're going to be using uh, while we work on the finish. Obviously, uh, we have the fiberglass fuselage, or the fiberglass is, is primed with your choice of primer. Uh, and so in order for us to fix any bad spots we find, we're going to need some tools. I like to use Bondo. Uh, a lot of people don't like it because they think it's heavy, but honestly, by the time you sand um, most of it away, you know, there's not much left. It dries fast and it doesn't shrink as bad as lacquer putty does. Um, to apply it I use uh, several different tools. Plain old playing cards work really great because they're firm enough to be able to spread things and uh, they have a little give. The other thing is as you're working you may need to touch up the primer. Now if you want to drag your compressor and gun out and do all that uh, that's great. Um, me personally I'm too lazy to do that so I just keep on hand some uh, enamel uh, some automobile primer and honestly I found this cheap duplicolor which is probably one of the cheapest brands out there uh, is the best one uh, the rust-oleum is too plasticky and doesn't sand real well this dries to like a powder and just comes right off um, and it works well and it's cheap and you find it at any automobile store or on, online so those are the things we're going to be using to uh, fix any bad spots along with our sandpaper um, but stick around because the next video we're going to start sanding and see what we got and I'm going to show you some tips on how to find bad spots on the plane and, and uh, We'll get more into that in the next video, so, so uh, thanks for watching, and thanks for all your support on RC Skill Builder, and we'll see you in the next video.